We are printing and applying custom decals on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In a previous video, I showed you how I used some custom decals as I customized and weathered a couple of covered hoppers for my layout and a little contest that was going on among some friends. Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how I prepared, printed, and applied those custom decals. This is a great project that almost anybody can do with some simple equipment that you probably already have, basically a computer and an inkjet printer. I'm going to show you how I made these custom graffiti decals, but you can use this same process to make any kind of decal that you like if you simply have the graphics that you want to use on those decals. So with that said, let's get started. I'll show you how I came up with my custom graffiti and how we made and applied these decals. Be sure to take a moment to check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad, where you will find a great line of model railroad equipment and supplies, as well as some of the best customer service in the business. They have a real-time inventory system that means what you see on the website is what you get, and they ship within one business day. Be sure and check them out at MidwestModelRR.com or follow the link in the description below. You can use the process that I am showing you today for making all kinds of decals, but the decals that I'm making for this project are custom graffiti decals. So I had to begin by finding a way to create realistic custom graffiti graphics. After doing a little research, I found an app for my Android phone called Graffiti Name Creator from Creative Apps Factory. I downloaded and installed the app from the Google Play Store. When you open the app, you first get to choose the style of graffiti you want. There are several great graffiti styles to choose from. Next, enter the text that you want for the graffiti and the app will generate the characters. You can use the tools in the app to position each character. I moved the characters to overlap one another as you would typically see on graffiti on rail cars and adjusted the height until I thought it looked right. I had trouble exporting the image directly from the app, so I simply took a screenshot of the finished graffiti cropped it to remove any unwanted space, and emailed it to myself so I could then edit it on my computer. Once the image was saved on my computer, I used a program called Photo Scissors to remove the background and make it transparent. Photo Scissors can be found and downloaded online, and there are both paid and free versions. I used a free version, and it worked quite well. Simply highlight the outline of what you want to keep in green, Then highlight what you want to erase in red, and you have a transparent background. Next, I imported the images into Microsoft Publisher to size and print them. I took some measurements to see what actual size I needed the decals to be. 
I then used the ruler functions in Publisher to scale the images to the size I needed. Publisher makes manipulating images like this really, really easy. When I was satisfied with the images, I printed them on decal paper. Here is where you need to make some important decisions. You can either use white or clear decal film. Clear allows you to see through any extra film that you may not get cut away as you prepare your decals, but often the color of the car beneath the decal will affect the final color and look of the decal. White paper prevents color distortion due to the paint of the surface, but any excess film will appear white. This is a trade-off that you'll have to weigh and decide for yourself. In this instance, I used white decal film. You also need to choose the correct type of decal paper depending upon what type of printer you'll use. Paper is available for both inkjet and laser printers, and you should purchase the type of paper that is appropriate for your printer. Be careful here, because many inkjet printers use the word laser in their name, like the HP LaserJet series, but are actually inkjet printers. You do not want to choose the wrong paper as it will result in poor printing results. I purchased my paper through Amazon, and in the description down below you'll find my Amazon Pick of the Week with links to this package containing both clear and white decal paper which works great for projects like this. You'll also find there links to Tester's Decal Bonder, which you'll need in the next step, and Microscale's Microset and Microsol, which you'll need when you apply the decals. Be sure to check out all of those links for your own decal printing and application needs. After I printed my decals on the decal paper, I allowed the ink to completely dry, and I then cut the section of the paper out that contained the decals, and sealed them with three coats of Tester's Decal Bonder. This is an acrylic sealant that will protect the ink on your decals from the water and other fluids used in the application of your decals. The bonder is clear, and I simply spray on a light coat, let it dry completely for an hour or two, and then apply the next coat. When the decals are completely dry, you're ready to apply them as you would any water slide decals. First, cut them out, cropping the film as closely as possible to the image. You can do this with a brand new sharp hobby knife, but a sharp straight edge blade works best, and a glass surface is ideal for cutting decals. Next, soak the decals in a shallow container of water for about a minute. Remove it from the water and let it set on a paper towel while you prepare the surface of your model. For best results, your model should have a smooth, shiny surface. If it does not, a coat of gloss coat before applying the decals will give you the best result and help you avoid silvering of your decals. Apply a bit of Microscale's Microset to the surface of your model. This helps prepare both the surface of the model and the decal for ideal bonding and gives you the ability to position the decal on the model. Slide the decal off of the backing paper onto your model and use a micro brush or a Q-tip to move it into position. When the decal is in place, a makeup applicator sponge is ideal for blotting up the excess liquid. This allows the decal to begin to stick to the model. Use a micro brush or similar tool to help the decal conform to the detail contours of the model. When you're happy with the placement of the decal, use a soft brush and apply a coat of Microscale's Microsol. This solution softens the decal film and helps it fully conform to the detail contours of the model. Once the Microsol is applied, do not touch the decal until it is fully dry. The softened decal film will easily tear or rub away once the Microsol is applied. After the decal is fully dry, inspect it carefully for any air bubbles. 
If you find any, you can simply prick them with a pin or a very sharp hobby knife point, then apply a bit more Microsol and let it dry. When you're satisfied with your decals and they are completely dry, you should seal them and prepare your model for any further weathering by applying a coat of dull coat. You can buy this in a rattle can, but I prefer to apply it with an airbrush. I use a 50-50 mix of dull coat and lacquer thinner and apply a light coat and then let it dry. At this point, you have some great looking decals applied to your model and ready for further weathering or for use on your layout. Uh, this is a process that is very, very easy, and anybody with some basic computer skills can do this. They can make and print and apply your own custom decals. So if that's something that you're interested in doing as you maybe modify some of your own rolling stock or some structures on your layout, I encourage you to give it a try. At the materials that you need for it are relatively inexpensive and so it's something you can easily experiment with to be able to make your own custom models look like nothing that anyone else has on their layout. Well, if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to take a look at the video in this link where you'll see how I applied these decals and some weathering to some rolling stock. I think you'll enjoy that as well. Be sure and Take a look at the description down below where you're going to find my Amazon page and those picks of the week that I mentioned during the video, as well as a lot of other fantastic links that I know that you're going to enjoy and benefit from. Be sure and take a moment to take a look. And I hope you'll join me each Tuesday as I bring you more great model railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?